One four, give me a range of those BMP. One one four, one dose. I got dust signatures, that's all I got. Up! 38! 38! Yeah! Fire! The M60A1 Rise Passive Tank is an upgraded version of the M60 tank. This model started from the M60A1 and added the Rise package, standing for Reliability Improved Selected Equipment, which was all about making the tank more reliable, tougher and better for night missions. The Rise Passive package introduced a bunch of technological upgrades and design tweaks to improve overall performance. Some of you guys described this tank as a mystery which is not much known about. And to be honest, after searching for some info about it on YouTube, I didn't find much either. So I went on to do the research for you guys and put all the info I found together. And this is what we're gonna talk about today. So hello and welcome and enjoy this video. So before we talk about the M60 Rise Passive, let's first talk about the M60 in general. And I'm not going to go into deep detail about the history and everything, but instead provide a short overview of the tank. So, the M60 is a second generation main battle tank from the US. It was officially named the Tank Combat Full Tracked 105mm gun M60 in March 1959. Although it was based on the M48 Patton tank, the M60 was never actually given the name Patton. During the Cold War, the M60 became America's main battle tank with a total of 15,000 units produced. The M60 tank was first used in combat by Israel during the 1973 Yom Kippur War. The Israelis called it the Magach 6 and it performed well in battles against similar tanks like the T62. Later in 1982, Israel used the M60 again in the Lebanon War. The US also used M60s in 1983 during Operation Urgent Fury, where they supported Marines in an attack on Grenada. Some M60s were sent to Iran as well, where they were used in the Iran-Iraq war. The biggest use of M60 tanks by the US was during the 1991 Gulf War, where the US Marines used M60A1s to successfully take on Iraqi armed forces, supposedly including T-72 tanks, which I personally find hard to believe. But perhaps an M60 with APFSDS and some upgrades might be able to take on a T-72, but who knows. After Operation Desert Storm, the US stopped using the M60 in frontline combat and retired the last ones from the National Guard in 1997. However, many other countries still use the M60 tanks today, although most of these tanks have been heavily upgraded. Talking about upgrades, the M60 tank has had a lot of upgrades over its lifetime. Its hull has been used to make many different types of vehicles like armored recovery vehicles, bridge layers and combat engineering vehicles. As of 2015, Egypt has the most upgraded M60A3 tanks with more than 1700 of them in service. Turkey has the second most with 866 upgraded tanks and Saudi Arabia comes third with, with over 650 units. But these were not the only ones. There were many more upgrades of the M60, such as the M60E1, the M60A1, the M60A1AOS, the M60A1AOS Plus, and I think you can see where this is going. America was basically too lazy to build something new, so they just kept slapping upgrades on this poor thing. So there are a lot of upgrades. And one of them, which sparks a few questions, is the M60A1 Rise Passive upgrade. So let's talk about that specifically. The upgrade for the M60A1, the M60A1 Rise, was introduced in 1975. It was a big change for the tank's hull and included improvements from TLAC, standing for Tank Laser Acquisition Computer, and AOS, standing for Add-on Stabilization, which were both older upgrade packages. The upgrade also included a better engine and an upgraded transmission, which were both designed to improve the service life and reliability. They also improved the electrical system by adding an oil-cooled alternator, a solid-state regulator and new wiring with connectors which were easier to access. Other changes included adding armored steel T-lag panels and switching back to stronger steel road wheels and return rollers. 
This updated version was called the M60A1 RISE, with RISE standing for Reliability Improved Selected Equipment. Quite frankly because the upgrades I just mentioned improved the reliability of the selected equipment. They just wanted us to know that they had to cherry pick parts to make this thing work. In 1977, this M60A1 RISE version got upgraded with better night vision gear. The gunner got a new sight, the commander got a new periscope and the driver got an IR night vision block. These new sights let the gunner and commander see and recognize things from farther away even in low light conditions. If they use the inferred IR searchlights, they can spot targets from over 500 meters, about 1600 feet away under starlight. In 1978, they added kits to the M60A1 tank so it could use M239 smoke grenade launchers and mount the M240 as its coaxial machine gun. They also made adjustments to the gun's aiming system to handle the new M735 APFSDS round, which is a high-speed armor piercing round. Tanks which were updated with the mentioned night vision gear, smoke grenade launchers, different coaxial machine gun, and adjusted gun aiming system for the new APFSDS round were called M60A1 RISE Plus. Later on, another upgrade was made which had all the mentioned upgrades plus a few new features such as a passive night vision system for the commander, gunner and driver without the need of an infrared searchlight, hence the passive in the name. It came with the ability to be fitted with a deep water fording kit to cross deeper water. In addition to that, it received the vehicle engine exhaust smoke system, which created a smoke screen around the tank by diverting gas directly into the exhaust system. Not to forget, it again got a better engine with a better transmission. In late 1978, they added two smoke grenade launchers, one on each side of the main gun. They also replaced the coaxial machine gun with an M240C. The smoke grenades were loaded with a special phosphor compound which hit the tank's heat signature from the enemy and therefore made it harder to spot with thermal sensors. This final version was called the M60A1 RISE Passive. And that's basically the history of the M60A1 RISE Passive. It's really just one of many upgrades of the M60. But the Americans didn't stop after this version. This is kept coming up with more and more upgrades for the M60. During the production of the M60A1 tank, a bunch of engineering tweaks were made to make the tank safer, more reliable, easier to maintain and better in action. These smaller updates were gathered into something called the M60A1 tank hull turret product improvement plan update kit. This kit included improvements which didn't fit into the big upgrade package but were still important for older M60A1 tanks to keep up with the newer M60A1 RISE version. The kit included all kinds of smaller changes like safety and reliability upgrades which helped bring older tanks up to the same level as the latest models. They even applied the whole PIP upgrade kit to some M48A5 tanks to give them a boost as well. Besides all the other upgrades, the most unique feature of the M60A1 RISE Passive is its rangefinder, which works using the optical coincidence prin principle. This means it measures the distance by matching two images. The M60A1 RISE Passive does this with a ghost image technique. You see two overlapping images of the target, and when you adjust them to line up perfectly, the target looks clear and sharp. That's when you know you've got the right distance. But with coincidence rangefinding it gets harder to tell the exact distance because the target gets farther away. For example, it's easy to miss the difference between 2100 meters and 2200 meters. Also, the rangefinder's optical equipment, which sits in the blisters on the sides of the turret, can only rotate so much. This means it can't focus properly on really close targets either. Because of the, these limitations, the coincidence rangefinder works best for targets between 500 to 2000 meters away. Now let's look at the testing of the M60A1 RISE passive. I really couldn't find much information about the testing of this variant specifically, but there was one document I found which presented the results of testing the mean miles between failure of the M60A1 RISE. Something is better than nothing, so let's look at these results. 
Now, to explain, mean miles between failure, short MMBF, is a measure which is used to predict how reliable a vehicle or a system is by estimating how far it can travel on average before something breaks down. For military vehicles like the M60A1 tank, MMBF is very important because it affects how ready the tank is for missions and helps in planning maintenance. And this was tested and documented as a comparison between an overhauled M60A1 and an M60A1 Rise. Mean miles between failure are usually tested with and without mission reliability factors. Now let me explain to you what with and without mission reliability factors mean. Without mission reliability factors represents the MMBF value when calculated solely on the mechanical reliability of the tank's components. In this case, it does not take into account the likelihood of components failure based on mission-specific demands. Essentially, it's an average reliability measure across all potential conditions. For the overhauled M60A1 tank, it is 59 miles. For the M60A1 Rise tank, it is 114 miles. With mission reliability factors, the factor-adjusted MMBF accounts for mission-related demands and how those stresses impact the likelihood of component failures. Mission reliability factors adjust for conditions like the intensity and duration of missions, which can influence how often failures occur. This calculation provides a more realistic reliability estimate during typical operational scenarios. For the overhauled M60A1 tank, it is 91 miles. For the M60A1 Rise tank, it is 170 miles. In this example, the overhauled M60A1 tank has a lower MMBF than expected, meaning it breaks down more often than planned even under mission-specific conditions. The new M60A1 Rise tank, however, is closer to the expected MMBF, which makes it more reliable for its 4000-mile expected lifespan. In regards to the deployment and field performance of the M60A1 Rise Passive, there wasn't much information I found about this version specifically. Obviously there's a lot to say about performance of the M60 in general, but that's not what we're here for. Nevertheless, I searched the internet for a bit and here's what I found from a US Army system assessment. The M60A1, M60A1 RISE and RISE passive tanks performed well in the field and were popular with the troops. The improved reliability of the tank's powertrain, meaning engine and transmission, were a big help. In the areas of reliability, availability and maintainability, the M60A1 RISE showed that it was much better than the older M60 and M60A1 models. But there were still some problems which have been around since the M60 series started. The biggest issue was engine failure due to dust getting in, especially in dusty conditions. Other parts which tended to wear out the fastest included suspension parts and road wheel whirl plates on aluminum road wheels. In sandy conditions, the sprockets and end connectors which were parts of the tracks wore down quickly as well. For the main gun, the main issue was leaking in the replenisher cylinders. When these parts weren't available in the supply system, it affected how ready the tanks were for action. Long story short, by the 1980s, even with upgrades, the M60A1 Rise Passive was seriously outdated. The tank's old rangefinding gear and basic armor made it fall behind more advanced tanks like the M1 Abrams and M60A3 TTS. Because of this, it was mostly kept in reserve instead of being used on the front lines. Anyways, that was all I had to say for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you think I said anything that is not right or you think I should have added any additional information to this video, please let me know in the comments and share your knowledge. Besides that, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.